Most celebrities' lowest moments, biggest freakouts, or controversies draw the most interest from the general public. For Keanu Reeves, it's the total opposite. The more normal, down-to-earth, and humble he is, the bigger the response. In this 2011 video that has 16 million views, a woman backed her Mercedes SUV into Keanu Reeves' classic 1973 Norton Commando 750 motorcycle while the actor was inside a medical building. The Beverly Hills police showed up to document the incident, Keanu talks with them, and the woman, just like any normal person would, and drives off after a couple of minutes. In this 2021 video, Keanu talks to his fans about his motorcycle. 8.3 million views, with people dissecting it like it's some kind of social experiment. I like the distance they keep. He does nothing to keep them at bay, but their respect shows in the way they stand back and give him space. And meanwhile, he's smiling, talking, reaching out to them. He's doing nothing to push them away. In this 2015 video, Keanu walks through an airport in a hurry while stopping to take some photos with fans. He is flying commercial and has no bodyguards despite him being worth $350 million. 7.7 million views. Here's what Joe Rogan had to say about Keanu. That guy goes to, sits, sits on the subway by himself. By himself. No, like, oh, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah but there's, there's no, no obvious <laughs> outward displays of wealth from him. Yeah. I mean, he's <laughs> insanely wealthy. Yeah. But when you, you see him, he's dressed like me. Yeah. He's, he's got, got like a regular watch on, sneakers. sneakers. He's normal as f. Yeah, it's, it's real weird. Some of you might think it's weird that people praise Keanu for having basic human decency, which goes to show you how Hollywood has lowered our expectations for celebrities immensely. But once you learn about Keanu's rough upbringing, as well as his over-the-top acts of generosity, you will understand why he has earned the title of the nicest man in Hollywood. Make sure you're drinking water. Keanu's father, Samuel Reeves, struggled with substance abuse, was in and out of prison for selling heroin until he ultimately abandoned his family when Keanu was just three years old, forcing his mother, Patricia, left to raise two children on her own working tirelessly as a costume designer. Patricia married and divorced four different men during Keanu's upbringing. According to Keanu's sister, the revolving door of men had a substantial impact on their childhood. How we lived our lives depended on the man of the moment. Despite having numerous father figures growing up, the kids were on their own for the most part. Kim claims, we never had anyone to play with us, to watch me riding horses or Keanu playing hockey. We all know that young men who grow up without stable father figures are more likely to grow up aggressive, hangry, depressed, and often repeat the cycle of abandonment. Keanu was set up for failure from the very beginning. His teachers noticed a vague sadness that loomed above him like a dark cloud. He spent more than five years bouncing from one high school to another, including one where he got expelled because he was too rambunctious. Keanu thinks he talked too much and was not generally the most well-oiled machine in the school. I was just getting in their way, I guess. Keanu felt a strong disconnect from others. They made him feel unwelcome, which did not change when he arrived in Hollywood. Reeves' agents told him that his name was Too Ethnic. Now this was the mid-1980s, but it still seems like a silly thing to worry about. And although Keanu was justifiably annoyed about it, he actually took what they said into consideration and tried a different name, calling himself Casey or Casey Reeves. But whenever he had auditions and they called Casey, he wouldn't respond. Most people would not even consider changing their name, let alone actually giving it a shot. Keanu proved early on he was open-minded and easy to work with. He went back to using his real name and it had zero negative impact on his career. What did have an impact on his career were some of the roles he landed early on. The foundation for Hollywood's nice guy was built on him being casted as somewhat of a teen heartthrob. Young and handsome male actors often accrue fan bases of women who romanticize them as the perfect guy. First, he starred in NBC's Babes in Toyland, Act of Vengeance, and Brotherhood of Justice, as well as making his first motion picture appearances in the sports drama Youngblood and the low-budget romantic drama Flying. But when he met casting director Carrie Fraser, everything changed. He walked in the door and I went, oh my god, this is my guy. It was just because of the way he held his body. His shoes were untied and what he was wearing looked like a young person growing into being a man. I was over the moon about him. His youth appeal earned him roles in dramas such as The Night Before, The Prince of Pennsylvania, and Permanent Record. But his big break came in 1989 with Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Although the film received mixed reviews, it was a solid box office success grossing $40 million against a $10 million budget. Reeves' portrayal as Ted Logan significantly boosted Keanu's Hollywood profile. Before getting the part, director Stephen Herrick screened between 200 and 300 actors for the main roles, requesting that each actor try out for both leading roles. 
Keanu was among the first to audition, and Herrick immediately set on casting him as Ted. When Keanu came in, he was one of the first. It was really kind of like, wow. He's Ted, and there was sort of a lovable goofiness to him. But Keanu wasn't just acting as a lovable good guy, that was really him. He proved that in 1991 where his act of kindness changed a man's career. In the adventure film My Own Private Idaho, Keanu co-starred along River Phoenix as a street hustler. Before filming, director Gus Van Sant struggled conceptualizing actors for the two lead roles. He sent the script out to Keanu and River's agents expecting them to reject it. Reeves' agent was open to the project, however, Phoenix's agent stopped reading the screenplay halfway down the first page, adamantly declining. Van Sant convinced Keanu to personally deliver the script to River Phoenix at his home in Florida since they were friends. Keanu did the director a massive favor, and over the 1990 Christmas holiday, he rode his motorcycle from his family home in Canada to the Phoenix Family Ranch in McCanopy, Florida, roughly a 2100 kilometer or 1300 mile ride. After the long ride, River read the script and wanted the role that Keanu was casted as, but they convinced him to take the edgier role of the drug addicted hustler, Mike, which he accepted. The craziest part is, River ended up getting way more praise than Keanu in this film. Phoenix won Best Actor honors at the Venice Film Festival, the National Society of Film Critics, and the Independent Spirit Awards. Tragically, in 1993, following several days of binging on cocaine and heroin, 23-year-old River Phoenix passed away outside Hollywood's Viper Room nightclub right in front of his brother, sister, and girlfriend. Keanu has rarely mentioned his close friendship with River over the years, opting to keep that part of his life private, but River's death still feels like a fresh wound to Keanu's heart even 30 years later. But if we're being honest, Keanu driving that motorcycle wasn't much of a sacrifice. That man loves to ride. However, during the filming of The Devil's Advocate, he gave up something that 99% of other actors wouldn't, money. The Devil's Advocate is a supernatural thriller that follows a young lawyer who dives deep into the dark world of success and temptation. While casting, producers approached Oscar winner Al Pacino, who turned down the role of John Milton three separate times due to the cliche nature of the character. Pacino even suggested Robert Redford and Sean Connery for the role. Keanu reportedly took a substantial pay cut worth millions of dollars so that producers could meet Al Pacino's salary demands. And yet again, Keanu's sacrifice benefited everyone but him. The film grossed over $61 million at the box office, and Al Pacino's performance was highly praised as one of the few bright spots in the film, and it wasn't the last time he gave up some of his salary. The actor reportedly took a 90% pay cut three years later so that he could star alongside Gene Hackman in The Replacements. But it didn't really matter if Keanu was a great guy or not, because many people thought he was a mediocre actor. In his most successful film at this point, he was considered the worst performer. Bram Stoker's Dracula was the award-winning gothic horror film where Reeves portrayed Jonathan Harker. The film was critically and commercially successful, grossing $82 million worldwide, surpassing Point Break as Keanu's highest grossing film. Although the film was a success, many critics disagreed with Keanu's casting and considered his performance weak. Total film writer Josh Winning said that Keanu's work spoiled the movie. He mentioned it in a 2011 list of 50 performances that ruined movies. Keanu's attempt at an English accent has been considered one of the worst accents in the history of recorded film. Yes, of course, sir. If I may inquire, what in fact happened to Mr. Renfield in Transylvania? But it doesn't stop there. In 1993, Keanu had a role in the Shakespearean-based romantic comedy, Much Ado About Nothing. Despite receiving positive reviews, Reeves' casting once again garnered criticism, and he would be nominated for Worst Supporting Actor at the Golden Raspberry Awards. After two more lackluster drama films, Keanu's career was on life support. Luckily for him, something big was right around the corner. Speed, an action classic whose premise revolves around a bus that is rigged by a terrorist to explode if its speed falls below 50 miles per hour. In 1993, executives were looking for an actor to portray the protagonist, Officer Jack Traven. They considered Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks, Wesley Snipes, and Woody Harrelson, but landed on Keanu. And again, he had to make some major sacrifices for this role. The director, Jean de Bont, didn't want the character to have long hair, so Keanu shaved his head. But then the studio executives got so upset over his shaved head that they demanded he wear a wig. But this was the director's vision, so they trusted him. However, 
there were more problems. Dubont didn't think Reeves looked strong enough. The thing with Keanu is that he looks very boyish. I didn't want him to be like a kid, and he loves to be like a kid. Keanu was yet again dedicated to completing a director's vision. He spent two months filling out his frame and getting in shape for the role. He was nervous in the beginning, then he got addicted to the adrenaline. This was only Keanu's second action film but the hard work paid off big time. The summer of 1994 saw the release of Speed, which grossed $350 million on a $30 million budget, becoming the fifth highest grossing film of 1994 and winning two Academy Awards. And if you needed another reason to know how little Keanu cares about money, he turned down a $12 million offer to star in Speed 2, Cruise Control. Despite the original being his most successful project to date at that point in his career, it wasn't against any of the artists that were involved in the project, but at the time, I'm sure we've all had this kind of feeling sometimes when things just don't feel right, and that's how I was feeling. Because of this decision, Keanu was blacklisted by 20th Century Fox for a decade. It was okay when he sacrificed his own money, but Hollywood executives will punish those that get in the way of making the millions. Unfortunately for them, the blacklist did not prevent Keanu from becoming a global superstar, because his next film was about to set him up for life. The Matrix depicts a dystopian future in which humanity is unknowingly trapped inside a simulated reality that intelligent machines have created to distract humans while using their bodies as an energy source. Keanu was not the producer's first choice. Will Smith declined because he thought the film was too ambitious. Nicolas Cage refused because he didn't want to film in Australia for that long. Brad Pitt declined to star in Fight Club. Good choice. Sandra Bullock felt that Neo should be a man and that she didn't fit. And even Johnny Depp declined leaving them with Keanu, who felt lucky to be considered for this movie. In preparation for the role, Keanu spent several months enduring intense martial arts training, which was intense considering he was fighting a pretty serious injury. He had a bulging disc in his spine, which led to him having a two-level fusion on his spine before training and getting a plate in his neck. He never told anyone because he wouldn't have been able to do the film, so he trained for The Matrix in a neck brace. Upon release, The Matrix opened to widespread acclaim from critics who praised its innovative visual effects, action sequences, cinematography, and entertainment value. It was a massive success at the box office, grossing over $460 million on a $63 million budget, becoming the highest grossing Warner Bros. film of 1999 and the fourth highest grossing film of that year. Keanu reportedly made $14 million for his role before scoring an extra $49 million after the film because of the box office success. The Matrix is a classic. And although Keanu was a successful actor before, he had officially secured legendary status with this film. As if his father's abandonment and losing his best friend wasn't enough pain inflicted on Keanu, he was about to face another tragedy immediately at the highest point in his life. Keanu and his girlfriend, Jennifer Syme, were expecting the birth of their first child. The baby was stillborn eight months into Jennifer's pregnancy, which they found out on Christmas Eve in 1999. Suffering from postnatal depression and the grief of losing their child, the relationship didn't last as Keanu and Jennifer eventually split. They remained good friends and were on the verge of getting back together until Jennifer died in a tragic car accident in 2001, just one day after she'd met with Keanu. And even with this unfathomable amount of tragedy, Keanu remains strong and uses his grief as motivation to give to others. Because shortly after this, Keanu started a cancer foundation. In 2009, Reeves revealed that he has a private foundation that's been running for five or six years, and it helps aid a couple of children's hospitals and cancer research. I don't like to attach my name to it, I just let the foundation do what it does. Where most celebrities try to indulge in their own moral grandstanding and pretentiousness when they do a good deed, Keanu kept it private for as long as possible, but his generosity doesn't stop there. During production of the sequel, The Matrix Reloaded, Keanu filmed a scene where his character Neo was involved in a battle fighting a bunch of clones of Agent Smith. The scene involved a dozen stuntmen who all acted as different Smiths in the scene. To thank them for their hard work, Keanu generously gave each member of the film's stunt team a brand new Harley Davidson motorbike. And no, this wasn't the only time he ever gave gifts to cast members. Reeves gave his John Wick Chapter 4 stunt team personalized Rolex Submariner watches to thank them for their hard work. The watches were worth $10,000 each. He also took care of the Matrix Resurrection stunt team, booking them an all-expenses-paid trip to the premiere. As a token of his appreciation, Reeves took care of the private jet travel and hotel accommodations, premiere tickets, and even organized a special post-premiere brunch for invitees, among other gifts. It was reported by multiple news outlets that Keanu donated 
half million or 70% of his Matrix money to cancer research. However, the story is not true. Keanu Reeves did not donate 70% of his salary to charity, his publicist confirmed. The internet immediately ran with this narrative because anytime they can get an excuse to praise Keanu for his generosity, they will take it. And after all, it does seem like something he would do. Ironically, the gesture that got him the most praise and attention was by far the most simple and normal. In 2011, this video of Keanu on the New York City subway went viral. After noticing a woman carrying a hefty bag, he pointed to his seat and asked if she wanted to sit down. The woman accepted the offer, at which point Keanu got up to let her take the seat he was occupying. The video has more than 42 million views. Just the idea of him riding the subway instead of some limousine or having a personalized drive made people relate to the icon, let alone giving up his seat. Many photos of him with women went viral that point out his no-touching policy. He was being coined a respectful king because he refuses to rest his hand on women while taking photos with them, and he rather just floats it a few inches away from their back. Most celebrities' dark side or controversies drive the most engagement. For Keanu, it's the total opposite. Viral Keanu news is him giving to homeless people, or spending time with them on the street, playing with puppies, showing a plush toy around China or dropping genuine wisdom on us. What do you think happens when we die, Keanu Reeves? <laughs> I know that the ones who love us will miss us. With all the pain Keanu has experienced, combined with the massive success he's had in Hollywood, he chose to remain a kind-hearted, humble man rather than a self-righteous narcissist. Most celebrities sell their souls for fame and fortune. Keanu uses his fame and fortune to help others. And although it may seem like he is over-celebrated for the smallest acts of kindness, Keanu Reeves has proved time and time again that he isn't a great guy by Hollywood standards. He is just a great human being.